Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Nick Petork and Anthony Tomaselli, uh, Rhode Island-based artists. I don't want to say local <laughs> because your art is featured outside of Rhode Island, obviously, Great. but we're happy to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Thank uh, you. They've got a really awesome gallery opening on the 10th of March, correct? At right. the right. Uh, Providence Art Club right here correct. in historic Providence. So they're here to tell us about that. Thank you so much, guys, for Thank joining you. Thank you. Today. Thank you very much. Good. So, yeah, Nick and Anthony, give me a little background on yourselves and sort of what got you here today in terms of your art. You first. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I'm originally from Chicago. I've uh, lived here long enough. They christened me, so I'm a native now. Um, my, my work is, uh, you know, held throughout the country at different galleries. Um, and Anthony and I uh, came up with uh, an idea of, you know, let's do a show at the Providence Art Club together. Uh, we've known each other for quite a while, and uh, I, it was a good fit, I think, because we both have uh, a passion for painting and an enjoyment of what we do. Nice. Okay, Anthony. <laughs> well, I'm born and bred here in Rhode Island. Um, been part of the Providence Art Club for 25 years. I own T's Restaurant. Many of you may know that. My paintings hang in the restaurant. Uh, both Nick and I have a, a severe passion for painting. Uh, and uh, we're just thrilled to be part of the art club, part of the Providence in Rhode Island uh, infrastructure of art. Uh, it's a great place to do art. Uh, people come to my studio from all over the world and just right. love Providence. So Excellent. say good things about Providence right. when you're out there. And that's one of the interesting things that you know we see people coming from all over the world. I mean, London, in France, and they're looking to gravitate towards cultural uh, uh, things to do, and this city has it. It's it's not so massive that they can't always find it, so it's here. Yeah, Absolutely. it's accessible. Absolutely. The art in Rhode Island is very yeah. accessible at all levels, from RISD um, to the local Yokel um, Art Association. So right. support them all. It's a Absolutely, good thing. that's a good plug. And so, tell me a little about this particular show. It's featuring some of your new works. Was there any? Did you chat with each other before you came up with this? Is there any sort of collaboration on the type of things we're going to see? Is it anything in particular? Tell me what you can about this show. Um, I mean, for, for me, every time I go, I go into Anthony's studio or something, I'll, you know, hi, Anthony, how you doing? I'm, I'm running over to different paintings that he's doing, you know, and as I, he's talking and I'm, I'm focused on those. And it's like, wow, this is interesting that, you know. So we didn't come up with a plan, just like newer work but we're always producing new work because you know we're very passionate about what we're doing we're we're you know start really early and you know we're we're doing different things so I'm able to go into Anthony's studio and look at different things and talk about uh, different works and get excited about it so we we just felt the passion of what we each do kind of fit how about you, Anthony? What's, what's well, inspiring um, you in this? Uh... Well, really, Nick and I don't like each other. <laughs> um, and we're very competitive, you know how this yeah, can be. I, had, I almost had to stand in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but um, every couple of years, we get a show at the Providence Art Club, and I said to Nick, why don't we show together? Um, the similarities and differences, and I respect Nick's work is just fabulous. And when you show with good people, it challenges you to do good work. So thank you for pushing me there. Oh, you guys and are hopefully nice. Hopefully, <laughs> That's true. No, it, uh, it is true. It, it's, it's a funny competitive. When you see someone do a great painting, it's like you're kind of like, why didn't I do that? Or, you know, I got I to gotta, I gotta up my game. Yeah, right. Absolutely. It really, is, it really is. Is there anything in particular that you find paint you paint more often? Any, is it scenery? Are you painting Rhode Island in general? Is, or do you kind of, are you all over the place? <laughs> this is your question first. <laughs> well, I find myself painting where I'm at. And um, I'm in New England a lot, so I paint um, um, New England differently. I paint it soft and snowy and, 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 and foggy, and then I paint it lit up, and I paint yeah. the... the the scene of Providence. I paint New York and the city activity a lot, and um, I'm just never at a loss for uh, for, for, for subject matter yeah. and, and inspiration. And um, you know, both Nick and I fortunately sell a lot of work, so it, that's a, a great motivator. And, um, and great. Uh, How about you, Nick? Anything that you tend to gravitate towards more a little bit? I mean, I I'm sometimes in the the mountains of Cortina, going up in the dark. Uh, to create, create work, create drawings, uh, to uh, you know the streets right around the corner from here. Yeah. So, and you know, I'm at the vineyard sometimes. Sometimes I go places, uh, just I'm, I'm just going there as a vacation or you know an obscure uh, location, and something catches me. 
and then I'm starting to create work without an intent, just because you know this is this is a passion of what you do. So let's talk about the art community in Rhode Island as a whole. I mean, we have some great galleries here. We have the Providence Art Club, which is one of the oldest, older, more historic galleries second, in, second yeah, in the country, <laughs> I believe. Number it's two. a really cool building. It's just, if you haven't seen it, it's that gorgeous yellow and brown building on the hill. I mean, it's so so gorgeous. And, um, you know, tell me about the community as a whole. We've got RISD here. There's a lot of artists that are being featured. I mean, what is Rhode Island art really like? Tell me about the community that you're in. Well, okay. I, I mean, I'll, I'll go first because I'm from another place, so yeah. to speak, in Chicago. That's great. So you have an outside perspective. <laughs> right. I have an outside perspective. I mean, for, for me, when I came here geographically, for just starters, this is an unbelievable place. We're able to access New York, Boston very quickly without dealing with that everyday large city. Um, I don't want to say the word grind, but and it, it allows us to have time to do our work, not just to... You know, I'm able to go, you know, to uh, somebody's studio to, you know, fairly quickly. I don't have to commute an hour on a train. Um, so I think the accessibility and uh, it just creates another, uh, it gets rid of a le level of pressure that I think a lot of artists just automatically gravitate towards large markets um, when they're very young. Um, so. Yeah, I find. Um Providence in Rhode Island, I find the community um, of people that are doing art great. Um, you have the contemporary scene going on, RISD, Brown. Uh, you have uh, painters in streets, on, in, in beaches, and it's just, there's a diversity of art, and I call it invention in history. And, and it's out there, it's percolating in the city all over the place between young and old, and uh, the, the repurposed factories that are out there and lofts and uh, it's just, um, it's been amazing. Um, I'm in my second half of my art career, so to speak. It's just been an amazing journey to see Providence uh, from when it was in the early 70s when I got out of college to where it is now. And, it, and, and people, there's all different kinds of art. And, and my plea to all of the artists is respect it all. Uh, if you don't understand it, that's okay from one end or the other and just respect Absolutely. all of us that are doing it. It's just a wonderful thing. It's, uh, we all wear the same T-shirt, I say, We're the same <laughs> uh, It's and, all good. Right. And, and for me, I, I always uh, use the words that, you know, as, as Rhode Island artists, I try to import as many people and I try to export goods, you know, to the world. And, you know, it's just because we're able to bring people in from all over the world, but we also need to, to show our work throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, import people, export goods. Absolutely. So. Well, you both are successful artists. You're selling art on the regular, and, you know, you're a business owner. You're blessed. That's, yourself. A, you're that's, a, that's a perfect But, you know, I think really a lot is. of people who are starting out as artists are struggling with that business aspect of it, how to run their own business and keep organized in that way. Do you have any advice for people that are starting out, maybe just graduating, or want to kind of kick off their career as an artist in terms of the business side? I'm going to say, first of all, do great work, number one. <laughs> Be good at it. <laughs> be good. <laughs> Don't be a crappy yeah. artist. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Just, there you go. And um, I think uh, artists, many artists, not every artist, they struggle with uh, what in art school is called the sellout, selling out. And people often ask me, "Do you paint what you love, or do you paint what you're passionate about?" And I say, "I'm sorry." They say, "Do you paint what you're passionate about, or do you paint what sells?" Yes. And my answer, I say yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I try to find things that are good for the marketplace as well as I'm inspired by. I also teach a lot, and that teaching keeps me honest with my students. I teach adults. So. Okay. Nick? And, and I mean, for, for me, uh, I'll always remember Alice Neal, a very famous artist. We, we talked one time, and she said, first time you sell a, your first piece, it's all a little different. And, you know, I, yeah. went, I, I went to art institutions I, my whole life, and, things, and it was, that was true. It just made it a little different because it's something you love, you vision, you see, and now other people are appreciating, uh, appreciating it. And one thing I found is, and, and I think Anthony's also very fortunate about this, we, we create things we're passionate about, mm -hmm. and because of that, that's what people are gravitating towards the work. 
they just they see the layers they see the history in the paint and that and that's what they get excited and yes we're fortunate because they do purchase it. Yeah. excellent so. and tell me a little bit about what your process is i mean do you find that you start a painting and finish it all in the same seating or are you coming back to it a few times or i mean what's your what's your process as an artist i've always been curious about that process for me starts with being in the field i paint a lot from photographs and i spend a lot of time with my camera. Um, I carry it with me all the time. Now we have phones. Um, and then I begin to draw, paint, um, and I stop multiple pieces. And there's always something to do. When I stop finishing them, I always have to start new ones. And the studio is active and alive, and, and there's coffee by my side all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Not beer or wine. That's after. There's good coffee but, at uh, teas, I right. would say. You got some good coffee. Uh, so I don't know if it's that coffee. But. <laughs> and, you know, one thing I do want to say, Nick, Nick, where did you go? Where did you school? You schooled in the Maryland? The, well, Art Institute of Chicago and Maryland Institute yeah. College I, of Art. I went to Rhode Island College, and, and there's good educations to be had everywhere. Um, you know, mine was a local one, and, and your, your schools were great. great right. Well-renowned schools. And um, just letting you know where we got our educations from. But doing it and sharing it, um, those of you that are out there that are artists, I always tell my students, put a show in front of you and you will paint. That's the biggest complaint most artists have. They don't paint enough. Well, I, I'll tell you, you don't place it in the importance part of your time management right. because if it's that important to you, you will paint. You will find a way. You will find a way. Excellent. Don't so. come to me and be Eeyore and say, I don't have enough time. <laughs> you're not going to get sympathy from me unless you're raising children. That's right. another story. How it's the you only mean? go you get. You yeah. Know? I mean, for, for me, it's always... Uh, an adventure in terms of I, I go through a process on every painting, every drawing. Uh, okay, I started. This is the greatest thing I've ever did, and it's oh, this is the worst thing. Oh no, if, if, you know, I this is this is just horrible. What's go, going to happen? And yeah. then I have to almost remi remind myself I'm a professional. Take a step back. <laughs> I've been doing this, and then all of a sudden you can just keep working through it, and it's, then you look, it's like it's not so bad. Yeah. So that you know, process it, is called getting lost in the woods and finding your way. Out. That's it. And yeah. I think we all go through that. Yeah, but um, I was really anything. lost in the woods last you week. Really yeah, I know. Yeah. So. <laughs> Literally. Uh, <yeah. laughs> GPS. Uh, good. Yeah, so. you gotta get a, you gotta get a GPS. So. so you know, Anthony, you you mentioned that you're in your second part of your life as an artist. So yeah. I'm curious as to, I mean, what the evolution has been. Do you do you go back and look at some of your older works and say like, ooh, what was I thinking? I don't. I'm not so sure I like that piece. Or ha have you evolved as an artist and sort of changed your style? Or where are you at? Where are you now? compared to where you were when you started. And you know, there's some of you that are from Providence. When I was 16, I went to Gene Tornoff, who was passed, and, and he, he was a philosopher as well as an artist. He said, know thyself and, and be one with God. That's, and I, that stuck with me. And as I teach, I don't try to teach someone to be creative. I teach them to find their soul. And when you find your soul, you'll be creative. And your soul is you, you're changing as a person and you change, you metamorphosize, your art metamorphosizes through your changes and your inspirations. Um, but sometimes we do look back and say, wow, what was I thinking? <laughs> and other times I look back and say, wow, I really hit it. You know, there's always, you know, throughout the history of my art uh, life, which is about um, 50 years of painting, you know, wow, when did that happen? <laughs> no, you were just a baby. You were finger yeah. painting when you started. Yeah, well, yeah, I was finger painting. <laughs> But it's I'm just a, a, yeah. it's a wonderful evolution. And it, again, sharing it with others. I've been part of crit groups with some great people. I've shared gallery space with great people. I remember getting at the first big high-end gallery, and I thought it was a hot ticket. Walked into the gallery, looked around, and said, oh my god, you have work to do. So, <laughs> how about you, Nick? What's the evolution of your um, work? You know, I sketch a lot. I, I, have, I'm always, I, am, I always have drawing books with me, things like that. And I, I put them on the shelf when I'm finished with them. And sometimes I just want to thumb through them. And it's like, that was a pretty good idea. And it's like, that was a pretty dumb idea. You know, that, so you, you know, and, but you, you, you almost take little pieces of each one of those and it always, it just keeps evolving. So, you know, I always, I always tell people that each one of my paintings has 30 years of work into it. Because because of all the decisions you make and things like that. The question: so it, How long does it take you to do a painting? Yes, thirty years. <laughs> For one painting, that must well, be. Just well, just because the cumulative yeah, knowledge, knowledge. Yeah. is 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 that. Yeah. yeah. 
because you, you know never what? really know when you're done. I mean, you, you never when really do know, you know, know that it's that's it. You're done when your friend comes over who's an artist and says, "Stop." Stop, and I, it, Stop it's adding blades of grass. You're no, it's done. not. I want to put a little bit over here. Wait, wait. I have, I have one artist friend that I literally take the stuff out of his studio <laughs> because he'll just keep working. And it's just, and he's like, he's just so excited. It's like, hey, just give me this thing. You know, we got to take it out of the studio for you. <laughs> literally adding blades of grass. Yeah. So before we, before we go, I want to talk about the Providence Art Club and, you know, why that venue is special to you guys and also about the actual show and kind of how, when it's going on logistics and things like that. So if, for people who have never been, tell us a little bit about the art club and, you know, why you're excited to be partnering with them for this show. You first. Okay. I mean, for, uh, for me, the Providence Art Club, it's just a, it's a great venue that I could sometimes, I could show work that maybe I can't show in certain galleries. It's just because I, I, you know, we had a winter show there. I, I, you know, my Colorado galleries were, I'll bring my winter work there. But sometimes people in Providence don't get to see my winter work. It gives me an opportunity to show sometimes images in Providence or work that I have in Providence that will get shown other parts of the country, but I'm able to show it here, you know, so. Great. I think the, you know, the Providence Art Club, my studio is the Fleur de Lis building, which is an historic landmark. It's one of the first buildings uh, built for the sole use of artists in America. I am the sixth artist to house that. So I've been a member of, of the Providence Art Club for 25 years. And there are 600 members, and 300 of them are non-artist members. So we mingle with the community at large. Um, people are constantly traversing in and out of my studio. I have constant stimulation of others. And it, it, the, the place itself, uh, we and all members of the Providence Art Club love the community, the camaraderie. Uh, the buildings, we have four buildings that are historic. It's, uh, it's been voted one of the be most beautiful streets in America yes. numbers of times. So just uh, come in to look at the buildings. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the show is in the Dodge House Gallery, one uh, the street level gallery. Right. Uh, the reception is this Sunday between 2 and 4. You guys will be there. And yeah. we will be there. Right. And um, we invite the world. Right. It's yeah. always interesting for us to, you know, at a, especially at a show, we're able to talk to collectors. You know, they want to know a little bit more insight of, you know, you know, where, why were you creating these pieces? They, they just want to know that. And to be able to be there at the show, we're able to, you know, give that insight to awesome. people. Excellent. And so it's going on for one month, correct? Is it a full, correct. full yeah. month? And I, we can, uh, we'll make sure we put the hours in the write up because I don't know the month top of my head. I don't know if you guys do, but. Yeah, Nick and I are very active. Yeah, Nick and I are very active on Facebook, Instagram. Oh, good, good. Right. And we answer our phones. You yeah. answer your phones. Oh, good. Yeah. Don't tell people no, that. No, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's asking just. Asking yeah, there you go. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Anthony and Nick, thank you for joining me. It's been so fun to have you well, on and you. chat with you. I really appreciate hearing about your inspiration, and hopefully we'll have you on back for your next opening in a, another location, wherever that may be. Great. So thank you guys for joining us today, and we hope everybody can head out to Providence Art Club this Sunday to check out some really beautiful artwork. There's three galleries total that will be open, a couple of other artists featured as well. Um, along with Nick and Anthony. So thank you guys for joining us. And thank you. Uh, Welcome. we will thank be you. back in just a couple of minutes with our last guest. We're gonna talk spring fashion with our resident Jim Fortier from Blueprint 5. Thank Very you. good. We'll see you guys. Bye.